Hi everyone, this is Ryan Collins again with another perfect video. Um, I'm here on this stormy morning with my cat, who doesn't seem to mind, to bring you um, a tutorial video about using mustache templates in Perfect to actually um, make some calculations and give us some dynamic content in our website. So let's get started. I'm on a little bit of a smaller monitor today. The power's been flickering on account of the storm, so I can't use my external, so bear with me. We're just gonna, we'll see all my crazy icons and default programs in my dock and stuff, and that's fine. All right, so let's call this the perfect dynamic website, okay? All right, super, we've got a folder. We can go into our Xcode, we can make a new workspace for it. We can come over here and we will call this dynamic website. I'll go ahead and throw that in the folder we designed for it. There is our workspace. and I'm just going to shrink this up a little bit under the assumption that on this smaller monitor my video is going to shrink and we want you to be able to see it. So here I am at perfectly soft, perfect in Git, and I've just opened the, uh, the releases and I'm just going to grab the source code for version 1. And that's right here under perfect, under releases, source code for version 1. The reason I'm doing that on this video is to make sure everybody has the same tools to work with. Um, once you get into perfect and you start cloning repositories, they've gone ahead and separated everything for Swift 3 and they're still making changes. So I'm going to go ahead and put that over here on the desktop. Bring up our workspace again. We're going to add the files we need to it with file, add files to dynamic website or command option A. I'm going to navigate over to my desktop, pull open perfect, and I'm going to pull open the library, and I'm going to pull open the server. I'm going to grab the library Xcode project, hold command, and grab the perfect server Xcode project. In my options, I'm going to make sure copy is unchecked and we're creating folder references. That is again. So when you come into repository and you're managing you know, pull requests from it and everything. This can be the same across all your projects rather than trying to manage many, many different perfect server projects. All right, so we've got our library and our server here. So of course we need our own project. So let's um, go ahead and add an OSX framework, Cocoa framework. And we will call this the, well, let's call this Dynamic website. Okay, that's real clear. Uh, we'll do it in Swift with unit tests. We're going to add it to the dynamic website project here. We can hit create. I'm not going to worry about a Git repository or anything this time. This is just by now you should be a little bit familiar with perfect and Git repositories and the workspaces and all that from my previous videos. If you haven't seen them, go ahead and see them. We will grab our perfect library target for OSX here and link that framework. We're gonna go over to our build settings, make sure all is checked, go down to our deployment options. We are going to hit deployment location, yes. We are going to change the installation build products location to configuration build, B-U-I-L-D-D-I-R. And that's a variable. When you hit enter, it should pull up build, debug, and build release. We are going to change the installation directory to perfect libraries. And then we are going to not skip the install because that is important. Next thing I like to do is come up here to our scheme manager, switch to our dynamic website, back in and edit that, and then just set that up to run the perfect server app as an executable then we are going to get our actual website going. So this shouldn't be too bad. We're going to add a new file. We're going to go down to OSX other empty. And I'm going to have index.mustache. Okay. Super. So we've got our index in here. I'll move that up to the top. And then we're also going to need a handler for it. So let's go to new file. We're going to use OSX source Swift and we'll just call this index handler.swift. 
I'm gonna move that up to the top here. So we've got our two funnels that we need to actually make this website work. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is, before I forget this, we're gonna go into our build phases, make sure that index.mustaches is copying over to our web root, and we're gonna add the copy phase to do that. We're gonna move this to the products directory and web root. Okay. And we are going to copy index tent mustache. All right. So that should work. All right. So in our index tent mustache, the first thing we're going to need is a mustache for our handler. And the way we do that is we put the percentage sign handler index handler. And we're going to name this index handler. So then we can also do our doc type. HTML, HTML, language, we will set to English, since I am doing this video in English, we need an end HTML, we're going to need a header, and we'll just add a meta, okay, set equals UTF-8, and we'll add, how about we add a title, and we'll tab but sometimes Xcode will do that and we'll just call this title to keep things simple and, and where we're putting these double brackets with a word in them those are the, the mustaches those are where we're going to replace content so we can make that title anything we can end our head we'll add a body to this <laughs> So we should probably say hello. Uh, hello name. Hey, <coughs> up here let's add a line break. And then here is a word we can insert. say insert this. All right, so we have a very basic website set up here. Now we need to set up our index handler. All right, so we don't actually need foundation, so I'm just going to import perfect lime. And again, was with the other videos, you may get an error because perfect library has never been compiled. That's okay. You'll just have to bear with it. All right, public function Perfect server module in it. So we need basically the initializer to initialize our perfect server, just like every other time. And last time we used this, if you remember, we were registering a custom route. This time we're not going to do that. We're just going to use the index.mustache as our index. We don't need that. Page handler registry is what we need this time. And that we're going to add a page handler. Okay, and that handler is going to be index handler, and we need that to be the same as this. We need that to be the same as this, and that is actually a closure. So, and that is going to be our uh, web response. Web response. Yep, that's correct. And that is going to return a page handler in return up. I'm sorry, we're gonna we're gonna return index handler. I've been working with some of the uh, all right. So we're going to return an instance of index handler. So that means if we're returning an instance of something, we need a class of it. So let's add a class index handler and that is going to be a subclass of page handler okay and that's part of the perfect library that is as well going to give us some errors and that is again all right all right 
So in our index handler, we need this wonderfully long function called values for response, right? And that takes two arguments, which is context, and that is a mustache evaluation context. And the second argument that that takes is a collector. And that is a mustache evaluation output collector. Hopefully I'm spelling this right. I'm sure we will find that soon. And that throws. And what does that throw? Well, it's a mustache evaluation context dot map type. Wow, what a mouthful, right? All right? So let's go ahead and write our code inside of that. All right. So this, this part will get a little bit sim more simple. So we need a variable called values, okay? And that variable called values is going to be set equal to a mustache evaluation context dot map type. And that we are going to initialize, okay? And then we can very simply go over here and look at our variable name. So we've got a title, a name, and an insert this. So we need values, values, title, and we're going to set that equal to, and values is a dictionary, so we can just set that equal to, I don't know, uh, custom page title. That'll be real obvious that that worked. Just going to go ahead and copy that and make two clones. Okay. And the second clone will do name. And we want it to say hello perfect, of course, because this is a test application. And then we need an insert this. And we'll say uh, I have inserted custom text at this point in the website. You know. All right, and then the last thing we need once we've set values is we need to return values. Okay, super. So that should work. Let's give it a test here and see where we've made our mistakes. If we haven't made any errors, that's going to go ahead and get rid of them as it builds. And it looks like we are good so far. Build succeeded. That's a good sign. App is launching. That's a good sign. And let's go ahead and go over here. There it is. Here is a word we can insert. Didn't work though. All right, let's see why. Because I spelled insert this wrong. You probably noticed that on the video, but that's all right. It's live development. I made this up as we go. Let's go ahead. There we go. I've inserted custom text at this point in the website. Awesome. So let's have just a little bit of fun then. All right, so let's say let number equal, what do we want a uh, number to equal? Hmm. All right, so let number equal seven. If we can, this is where we can start to get in logic, number equals seven. If number equals seven, we're gonna say values insert this equals number Oops, there we go wrong slashes in, and we're going to say else, I'll use insert this is equal to our, our comparison failed. Right. Uh, that's fine, it will never be inserted because number is obviously Seven. And let's change this to our number is. Right. 
And let's build that up. And our number is seven. So likewise, if we stop this from running and we go back in here and we go into our handler, if we change this to anything that's not seven, say 55, and build that, Obviously, that will never be executed, but you can see our comparison failed. So you can really see the power of mustache templates in here. And mustache templates can obviously be written in HTML with any, any, anywhere you want dynamic content to be. You just put the little mustache, you make a function that adds it to values, or you add it to values yourself, and there you have it. You've got a dynamic website in perfect. Thank you for watching. Again, this has been. Uh, another video with Ryan Collins. You can find contact information for me at ryanmcollins.com. And you can also find more information about uh, Perfect. You can find the documentation for Perfect at perfect.org. Thanks for watching.